Hi, I'm Jeff Cogswell. Today here at Go Parallel, we're going to talk about how to use Parallel Studio's Math Kernel Library to generate random numbers that can be used in scientific applications. One area this is particularly useful is the Monte Carlo method, which I introduced in an er earlier video. And in a future video or blog, we will pull all this together and create a fully functional Monte Carlo simulation. So the part of the Math Kernel Library we're using today is the VSL, which stands for Vector Statistical Library. And in a moment, I'll show where you can find information online about it and the, where the documentation is. But first, let's take a look at some quick programs here. I put this one together, which generates a whole stream of random numbers. The way this thing works is the, the Math Kernel Library uh, can generate entire streams of thousands, millions of random numbers all at once into a vector. So you don't need to call the into the library over and over. If you need 10,000 random numbers, you can do that in one single call. So what we've got here is I created an integer count. At first I set it at 1,000 and later on we'll try some bigger numbers here. And down here is the important part for getting it started. We call VSL new stream, which initializes the random number generator. Now there's more options here I'll talk about in a minute here. Then after you've created the stream, you can do the actual random number generation. And to do that, you have to specify what's called a distribution. And in this case, we're going to do a Gaussian distribution. And in another example shortly here, I'm going to show you what different distributions look like. And what you do is you pass in uh, another option, which I'll show you in, on, in the documentation, a, where your stream is, how many items to generate, the vector, and for Gaussian, you need to start with an A and a sigma, which have to do with uh, standard deviations. And, and you can read about that on the documentation. So let's try this out. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate 10,000 random numbers, and I'm only going to print out the first 10 of them. So let's go ahead and run this. And there we go. Yeah, there's 10 of them right there. And you can see there, if you're familiar with how standard deviations work, you can see I, I put a 25 in there with the 75 for the, the middle, and it's pretty well wrapped around that number. So let's try a bigger number here. Let's instead do 10, I've got my comments wrong here, uh, 10 million. And you can see it's going to go very quickly. I need to comment out this one. And there we go. It generated 10 million random numbers. And again, we're only printing out the first 10, but it did generate 10 million. So let's bump it up even farther. And this time we're going to do 100 million. Took a little bit longer, but still very fast for 100 million random numbers. So let's look at what where we can find out more about this online. Let me go over to our web browser here. And what we've got is if you put in, if you go to Google and put in Intel MKL, which stands for Math Kernel Library, and VSL, Vector Statistical Library, and search on that, down here you'll find random number generators. That will take you to here. And I encourage you to read. There's several pages up front that talk about how the whole thing works, and I really encourage you to read about that. It explains how the library works, what the motivation is, uh, why there's different types of generators and whatnot. And then you come down here, we've got service routines. Service routines, the very first one is new stream. That's the one we want. And here we can see what the, the different options were for creating the stream. The important one is the BRNG, Basic Random Number Generator. And that, over here, there's a table. Let's open that in a new tab. And this tells you what type of, the, this shows you the different types of random number generators we've got. Now, one distinction here, we're generating random numbers and we're choosing a distribution. This is the step where you choose how the numbers are generated. We're using this one here, a Mersenne Twister, which is one of the more common approaches for random number generation. But there's several here. You can read about each of these. And if you're not familiar with them, you can Google. They're all, they're all out there and pretty well known. And then come back over here, go back to random number generators, and then look at distribution generators. 
And here we've got the different types of distribution. We use the Gaussian distribution, and they list several different here. Here, there's a, a Cauchy distribution, gamma distribution, Laplace distribution, several different kinds here, and then some dis discrete distribution generators. Again, look through the list, and you'll probably find the ones that are important to you. We're going to look at two of these. We're going to compare the Gaussian to one of the others. So let's do that right now. So I've got this second program here. I'll switch this over to Startup Project. Now this one's very similar to the other, except I'm creating two vectors that I'm going to fill. And I'm initializing one stream, and then I'm going to call Gaussian Distribution and fill both of these vectors with a series of random numbers. Now, these functions are all parallel friendly. They're thread safe. So if you've got several of these that you need to run, a dozen or so, you can actually wrap them in an OpenMP parallel statement and have them all run simultaneously. And here I've got code coming out where I'll demonstrate a different distribution. And then, after I, after I generate that list of random numbers, I'm using a library called PingWriter, where I'm going to actually create a plot of these, and I'm going to cycle through every one and do a plot on it and save it. Then I'm going to call into the Windows shell execute function to actually open that plot. So, let's see how this goes. I've actually got it already compiled. and I will run it. Now if you run these things in the, the command line like I do, you're going to want to open up the Intel Composer command line, uh, which is down inside the start menu for, for Intel Parallel Studio. Otherwise it won't find all the libraries it needs. And run it. And there's my plot. And that is uh, a thousand points that I plotted. Let's run it again. By the way, I've seeded the random number generator with the current ticks on the system so that it'll be different every time. If you want it to be the same each time, you can start with the same seed. And in fact, in the documentation, they talk about that, uh, whether it really is important to seed it differently every time or not. They encourage you to only seed it when it's absolutely necessary. And we run it again. And there we go. It flashed quickly. I will switch between these two. And you can see down below, I'm cl clicking on, this, on the test bar to switch between them, and you can see they are indeed different. Okay, now let's try a different distribution here. Let's comment out this code here, and bring in this code. This uses a uniform distribution. Now just a quick point here, in the, in the documentation you're going to see there's two forms of each one. There's ones that start with VDRNG and then ones that start with VSRNG. The VD ones are for double, double precision, and the VS ones are for single pre precision floats. And we're, we're doing double precision here. So let's save this and run it. And there we go. Now it's more, now it's distributed evenly throughout. Let's increase our number here. to 10,000. Compile it. And now we've got a whole lot more points. Now if you really crank it up, you'll eventually just fill this whole thing. So you may or may not need to do that, depending on what you need to do with your random numbers. If you're doing, for instance, a Monte Carlo method, you don't need to go anywhere near filling this thing. And that's it. Let's go back to, before I leave you, let's go back to this one, and I'll show you briefly what the higher numbers do. And compile it. And now we've got a lot more. And we can crank that up to even more. And even more. So you can see uh, this would be pretty useful in different kinds of scientific applications depending on how you need your numbers uh, distributed, whether you need them close together in the middle like this, like some kind of astronomical application or whatnot, or a, a, a atomic application, uh, or if you need them all spread out. Now one more quick comment. Uh, I used in here to do these plots this library called PingWriter. 
Pingwriter is an extension to the libpng library. However, it was it was compiled for 32 bits. To get this to work, I had to recompile both Pingwriter and the libping libping library for 64 bits. It was kind of a mess, and I did that just a couple days ago. And if there's interest, uh, go ahead and comment on my blog, and I can point you to the how I did it or share the library with you. And that's it. Uh, random number generators are extremely useful in scientific applications, and soon we'll look at a full-scale Monte Carlo application.